York's Classic Rock, Q1043. Welcome back. Jonathan Clark in the studio with a gentleman by the name of Lucas Nelson, and he's going to talk about his fantastic band, Promise of the Real. The new album is self-titled on Fantasy Records, the house that Credence built, some would say. Uh Lucas Nelson, welcome. How are you, man? I'm perfect. How are you, man? Uh, Good. Uh, And Fantasy Records. Also, Lenny Bruce was on Fantasy Records. Dave Brubeck was on Fantasy Records. That's a pretty cool label to be on. good company, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you're playing uh, Stephen Talkhouse out east in Long Island this Thursday night, August 31st. And another really cool gig, uh, September 6th at the South Street Seaport with you, The Promise of the Real, and Gary Clark Jr., who I'm sure you know very well, being that you're from Austin at least Gary half of the year. Gary and I are, are buds, yeah. Yeah. I think he's a cool dude. Um, and then um, I want to get to the uh, what's happening in Texas right now. But so many, so many things to ask you about. But first... I read a very interesting story about how you came up with the band name. And as a burgeoning surfer myself, uh, if you wouldn't mind telling that story to us, how you came up with Promise of the Real. Oh, um, well, yeah, I I met Anthony Logerifo, who's our drummer. Yeah. And I met him at a Neil concert, a Neil Young concert in in, in L.A. and, uh, And after the concert, we went back to his place he's like man let's go surfing and i was like all right so we, we it's the middle of the night <laughs> and he took us out with some of his buddies that are still my buddies today uh, and we went out under the pier in seal beach but uh this first step i took in the water i stepped on a stingray <sighs> and it whipped around and stung me in the ankle right and i i didn't want to seem like i was pussing out right know? yeah yeah because i i figured they would never believe me that i like stepped on a stingray and I'm like and i was the first met these guys first was, time you met them yeah, yeah it's kind of like, gnarly everybody's going out and like surfing in the middle of the night you know i thought well i just gotta got a man it. up man i charged it so i went out and i surfed for a while until my leg just started swelling up and i sh- like showed everybody and they're like oh my god yeah there's tons of stingrays out here it happens all the time you should have said something and i was like oh man so um, we went back and Anthony took me back to the place they were staying and I was crashing on the couch and he brought this big pile of weed, uh-huh. looked about three feet high <laughs> and he put on some Neil and said, Hey, listen to this. And he put on, uh, that one song from Ragged Glory. I think it's from Ragged Glory or Freedom or something, which, which is, uh, Walk On. Right. And, uh. And sooner or later, it all gets real. Some get stoned, some get strange. Sooner or later, it all gets real. And then after that, I started thinking, I just got maybe I could start a band called Promise of the Real. Oh, and, nice! And you know, because it's you know that's kind of what that promise is in that song is the promise of the real. You know? Yeah. And that and uh, the concept of what's real really was hitting me a lot at that time because I'd grown up kind of like. Uh, in an i on an island or in the country out in Austin or you know and I and I was it was just a slower pace and there was more I don't know personal connection and then I went to L A and it was just like everything was polar opposite polar opposite you know and I I got there and I was in college and there were all these people and I couldn't tell what was real or not you know so it was a big concept for me in coming of age time yeah yeah and then it stuck. So that's a good way to come up with a band name. Uh, most of the time I have I have bands in here and they're like on Google for like three days seeing yeah. if anyone else has uh, taken their name. Right. Uh, his name is Lucas Nelson. The band is Promise of the Real. And we have this fabulous uh, vinyl album out here. And it looks like there's four sides because it's a double album. Am I yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. And there's actually some tracks on there. So that... Show the back co- cover here, guys. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's some tracks on there that you can't get uh on the regular release right so, so you can only have them them on vinyl there's a version of if i started over which was the original version which has a big string orchestra and i'm actually inclined to say i, I like that version better i'm i wish we would have put it on the record but oh okay <laughs> but uh so there's some there's some good easter eggs there there's three three other songs that are actually some of my favorites too like uh, Country Sandcastles is a really cool one. Yeah. Um, I, I want to get to, uh, well, so the, the Neil Young is uh, kind of uh, interesting how this all happened. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you kind of Neil gave you the band name in a weird sort of divine intervention way. Yeah. Uh, and then years later, there you are 
playing on Neil Young's album and going out on tour with him. Uh, now, did this happen when you were playing Farm Aid with uh, your dad, Willie? Yeah, well... The, uh, the initial meeting? The or? initial kind of... Yeah, because we would go out and we'd play Neil's songs, uh, and we started playing Neil's songs uh, as Promise of the Real. Uh, we'd play a cover of his usually every time we played Farm Aid. And so we would... You know, we're kind of like, "Hey, Neil, <laughs> we know your shit." You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then he would, and he, he, he loved it. And so we kind of, after a while, we became pen pals. Actually, through a guy named Rick Roses, who played with Neil and is an amazing bass player. Yeah, he's since passed, and he was a good friend of mine. And he was one of the first. There's actually a session that I did with him and Spooner Oldham. And oh, some wow. of the guys, and it's it's a bunch of music that's unreleased to just sitting there at Jim Henson Studios so I was going to try and go back and get that and, right but uh anyways that's a side note and uh but um so Neil started I writing me an email and we started talking you know every few months we he'd right. say something and that happened, that was like that for like 5 years and then and then uh, one day he came up on the bus and sat down and said, hey, we're going to be playing this gig together with you and your dad and me. And I was just thinking about ringing my electric guitar, maybe jamming with you guys. If you'd be, I'd be, yeah, sure. <laughs> and, then, and then that day um, he invited my brother and I to go and acoustically do Rockin' in the Free World with him uh, on at Farm Aid. And so that was kind of the first time we, we just really got with Neil. And... Uh, and uh, and then when we went to the Nebraska together, we we played this show with him where we didn't practice anything. We just went on his bus. He showed us a few songs, and he's like, "Can you do this?" And I said, "Yeah." And we said, "Yeah," because we knew all the songs already. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we loved them, you know. Yeah. And so, and that's the thing is, what you know, we when we jammed, it was like we'd already been jamming with him forever because we were. I mean, in and, essence, yeah, and, you I mean, were. we were sitting there jamming to his music, and so, right for our all of our childhoods childhoods and so yeah it was great and then it just clicked and then he called us to go in the studio and then we went and learned a bunch of his songs just on our own just in case and then he called us on the road and we already knew a hundred of his songs and we, he was stoked you know right so so, so it just kind of snowballed and now we just recorded then we recorded a live record out on the road called earth and then and now we've just finished another record with him. Oh man, uh, so in cool. Malibu, yes, and that's it, that's gonna blow people away. It's, really, it's really, really, really good. It's be it's better than, I think it's as good as the any Neil. It's like a Neil Young record that right. love love and and passion and subtle lyrics. It's not so overt. Everything and it's positive and and then there's hope. It's and Neil good. is pretty prolific. I mean, you know, he'll yeah. like has the capacity to release a lot of music. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he, at least like once a year, he's like releasing yeah. something. Yeah, it seems but these I days. think this would be the best Neil record in the last twenty years. Wow, I'd say, in, in in my opinion, you know. And is it the next one that will come out? Or I is don't it... know his plans. Yeah, he's, yeah. You know, Neil's, uh, but but. I do know that we're we're gonna want to go on the road soon. And, oh man! And uh, and we're gonna do that. But you know, we've also got my record that just came out. That's right, Lucas yeah. Nelson, Promise of the Real. Yeah. Um, and I want to get to that, but I, I, you know, being how you grew up, you're the son of Willie Nelson. Was there any other option uh, for you as far as a career? Because I know you did go to college. Uh, you tried to go to college. You went for a little while. Yeah. But, uh, was there any other option besides music? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, <laughs> there were a few other options. I was on a swim team, and I was pretty good at swimming. Yeah. Um, Could have gotten a scholarship, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, because I started smoking weed. <laughs> and that, that yeah, that affects went. the endurance, maybe. I yeah. Don't know. Well, I, you know, I was a good swimmer. I was competitive, but I just didn't want to cut my hair anymore. And I just, I, I hear you. I just didn't. I didn't want to. I wasn't. It, it, the passion left me when I discovered music, and 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 so. I went to music. I mean, I was skateboarding. I wanted to at one point do that professionally, and uh, yeah, I, I was all at golf. I was good. I've been golfing since I was a kid. I like playing golf. So there was, it was either going to be like an athlete or some kind of writer. 
or, yeah. or a musician. Yeah. But Chris Christopherson sort of had a role in you like going for it full time, I think, right? Did he? Well, he was a mentor, yeah, and, and Dad was too. And, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, all of them, uh, you know, the, that inspiration. Honestly, Hendrix and Stevie Ray were were the main influences that got me like playing guitar yeah yeah because i was too shy to sing for a long time and i didn't really like the sound of my own voice uh i wrote songs and i and i wrote i that was kind of like my first thing that i did but once i fell in love with hendrix and stevie ray then i started really getting into music and you and like a million other teenage boys Yeah, yeah yeah it's the same story you know except uh you know, I, I guess, I don't know, yeah. It's the same, same story as a million other guys out there. <laughs> Lucas Nelson, Promise of the Real, the new album is out now. Uh, Stephen Talkhouse out east in Long Island this Thursday night, August 31st, and then South Street Seaport September 6th uh, with Gary Clark Jr. It's interesting, you were born, I think, in Austin, but you also spent a lot of time at your dad's place in Maui. Um and musically, your influence, obviously, are country, blues, but also the rock thing comes through as you're talking about uh, Jimi Hendrix. Did your mom play you, like, a yeah. lot of Jimi Hendrix as a kid? Or Yeah, I mean, Hendrix, Stevie Ray, there was guys in Maui that I jammed with that were, like, dead, the Grateful Dead. And right. I learned, I learned. I mean, I'm good friends with Bob Weir, and he was one of the first guys to help us out in the yeah. band, as a band. We did some recordings over at TRI, and... I'm in that Move Me Brightly film, you know, I think. TRI is Bob's studio. Bob's and, studio yeah. in San Rafael. And, right. And, and so Bob and I are real close, and, and uh, we've written a little bit together, John Barlow and all those old guys. You yeah. Know. Um, and, and I just, you know, I got that culture in Maui where it was uh, more, uh, yeah, this it's just that the, it was kind of like this conscious culture whatever it was right i have to tell you about my experience at your father's ranch it's the luck ranch right is that uh is that where they have i mean i went there during south by southwest in the middle of a hailstorm um and uh it was just it was just wild it was at night it was during south by and we were walking up this really long dirt road the hail was coming down and then these beautiful horses like galloped up to us to say hello to us in the middle of this hailstorm. I think they must have been cults or something like that. Um, but that ranch, um, it, it was a movie set for one of your dad's movies or something, mm. or and it, it kind of still looks like a movie set. Yeah, people use it for that. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. I mean, it's it was uh, for originally it was for the redheaded stranger. I right. Suppose, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, some of your first memories growing up are pretty amazing. This was during the infamous Highwaymen sessions and tours. Your father, Johnny Cash, Chris Christopherson, Waylon Jennings. Actually, I had Jesse Coulter up here okay. uh, yeah. six months or so ago. Yeah, um, Jesse's great. And what's going on in uh, Texas right now with Hurricane Harvey and everything? You have something on your website, I believe, or, where people can donate and help out. Uh, yeah, there's some some. What was the length of some hyper local, uh, hyper local uh, charities and yeah, you know, for animal shelters and places you can help out on a local level rather than go to the Red Cross and that's on our Facebook. Yeah, it's uh, Lucas Nelson Promise of the Real on Facebook. Yeah, it's the Texas Tribune, I think. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you have this uh, beautiful guitar here. This oh, is yeah. a a Bob Dylan Gibson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking of that, maybe you'd want to play something. Right. Live for us, uh, dealing with uh, Texas, perhaps. Well, it's flooding down in Texas. All the telephone lines are down Well, it's 
squatting down in Texas. All the telephone lines are down. I've been trying to call my babe. Lord, and I can't get a single sound. The dark clouds are rolling. My, I'm standing out in the rain. Well, the dark clouds are rolling. My, and I'm standing out in the rain. Flood water keep on rolling. My, it's about to drive poor me insane. Lucas Nelson playing live for us here on Q104, Threes Out of the Box, an apropos song for what's happening in Texas right now. Go to Lucas Nelson's Facebook page right now, Lucas Nelson, Promise of the Real, and there are links where you can help people in Texas because of the uh, Hurricane Harvey and all the flooding going on. And uh, that song, of course, uh, we all remember Stevie Ray Vaughan doing that one, and then uh, Lucas's version right there, which was fantastic. Thank you so much, man. Thanks, that was brother. That was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um Promise of the Real, uh, is that also technically your, the band that your father uses for all of his gigs, or he has the separate band no. with some of the old guys? He's got, he's got the Willie Nelson and Family Band. Right. Which he's had for 50 years. Oh, my God. Um, a Star is Born, once again, a Chris Christopherson reference, but uh, this new one with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga is coming out. And you are highly involved. You are actually in this movie too. Yes, yeah. We're uh, Promise of the Real is in the movie. We're backing Bradley's character in the movie, and then we also played on a bunch of songs that I produced, and uh, some of them I wrote, and, uh-huh. and some of them I wrote with Gaga, and we so we we did music production on that, and then I I was kind of called in to consult Bradley and 
help him learn to to um, be a rock play and roller. Part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A really must have been a really cool experience working and doing that. Bradley's like you said, is he, he's like a pretty good singer now, right? An amazing singer. And yeah. He's an amazing musician, actually, and uh, and an incredible. Uh, I mean, he's 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 very inspiring in all in many ways. Is that coming out this year or next year? Probably next year. Twenty eighteen. Well, okay. Next year. And Gaga working with her. What was that like? She's a special person. She's a good friend of mine, and uh, she's been very supportive and. Yeah, very helpful and uh, love her to death. And uh, and the girl can sing, that's for sure. We she know can that. sing. She's she's <laughs> a talent, and she's got her Joanne tour that she's on right now. So right, yeah, yeah. All uh, it's Lucas Nelson, Promise of the Real. It's the brand new album, and you can see Lucas playing live at Stephen Talkhouse out in Eastern Long Island this coming Thursday night, August thirty first, and then September sixth. I guess that's next week with Gary Clark Jr. Mm. Uh, at the South Street Seaport. Uh, here in NYC. Uh, Lucas, a pleasure having you in here. Uh, record sounds great. You sound Thanks. great. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, we'll, we'll see you at these uh, upcoming shows. And tell tell Neil hello for us as well. We'll say hi. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right, brother. New York's classic rock. Q1043.